This is one of the hardest videos I have ever had to start, and that's not because the video is emotional to me or because the topic I'm discussing is hard, it's just, this story is just so incredibly bizarre that I genuinely don't know where to start. But I have to start somewhere, so I guess I'll start with a bit of a disclaimer. If you read the title of this video thinking that it was going to talk about the complexities of Joji's music or the comedic absurdities of Filthy Frank, you're somewhat right, I will be discussing both of those topics, but this isn't a video focusing solely on either one of those things. I want to shift my focus to George Miller, the man behind the most infamous YouTube channel on the planet. The man who has made some of the prettiest lo-fi beats I've ever heard, and if you don't know who the hell I'm talking about, the man credited with starting the Harlem Shake. So without further ado, let me introduce you to George Miller. George's story starts all the way back to 2008 with the creation of the YouTube channel Disaster Music. The first couple of videos uploaded to this channel feature exactly what you would expect to be uploaded to a teenager's YouTube channel in 2008. Shitty attempts at creating viral videos such as Lil Jon falling off a table and how to backflip into a faceplant. Videos like this continued to be uploaded until finally, on August 15th, 2011, a character was born. I'd like to share with you a little story. Uh, I tend to have explosive diarrhea, like shit just flies all over the place. So I, 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 went, I sat down to take a shit. Uh, of course, diarrhea just exploded all over the place. I mean, it was, it was shit. It was shit, basically. I, I'm sorry, I had to stop that. Look, I know this guy is a legend on YouTube, but I, I mean, come on, that was one of the worst YouTube videos I've ever seen in my life. But regardless, George had just created what would soon become one of the most notorious characters in YouTube history a man known by the name Filthy Frank. Pause, pause. I have a little bit of explaining to do before I continue the story. Filthy Frank is a parody character coded in many layers of irony. Frank is meant to personify everything bad with the world, or more specifically, everything bad with the internet. He's hypocritical, he's an absolute dick, and most importantly, he's as offensive as anyone can possibly get. But that's what makes Frank so important and loved by the internet. He's the world's biggest inside joke. Anyone who's in on the joke realizes the satire of the character and points and laughs and says, wow, this guy's a genius. And those who aren't in on the joke end up on an episode of Loser Reads Hater Comments. How the fuck is this faggot shit funny to you retards? Everyone keeps saying he's hilarious, so I watch another video because maybe I only saw the worst ones, but no. Each is more retarded than the last. Kill yourself, faggot Frank. I'm an optimistic person. Words don't hurt me. Everyone's always fucking making fun of me. Stupid people making comments about me. Yeah. Like I said, levels of irony. Anyways, back to the timeline. Six months after the initial upload, a new character appeared on George's YouTube channel. This time, George dressed in a pink morph suit and sang Adele. I do so bad. This is what would eventually involve George's second most popular character, Pink Guy. Pink Guy is Filthy Frank's most valued friend, although in the videos, Pink Guy does seem like more of a close pet than an actual person. In fact, before Frank became as popular as he did today, George's first sign of fame on the internet came in the form of Pink Guy dancing to the song The Harlem Shake. That's right, George and his friends all humping the air is what started the viral trend The Harlem Shake all the way back in 2013. But after his first taste of viral fame, George began to refine his style of comedy, and disaster music was beginning to gain some traction. But George decided that he needed a new home for Frank, as he felt that Disaster's music was way too crowded with old memes he made in middle school, as well as some not-so-funny things he did as Frank. So, on August 15th, 2014, exactly three years after the birth of the Filthy Frank character, George started a new channel called TV Filthy Frank, which became the character's new home. Throughout the next few years, George would create tons of new characters for the channel, becoming one of the most famous people on the site. He eventually started branching out to other creators, eventually befriending people like iDubbbz, MaxMofo, Anything For Views, who created some of my favorite YouTube videos of all time. Super Trash Bros, where they pranced around the woods as Mario and Luigi. The question, Bloach! Look at it! I have a question for God. Why? The Gentleman's Guide, where they all parodied being filthy rich and gave themselves stupid challenges. Deadly Twister, where they got super drunk and played Twister, except each patch has a different painful task they need to complete. Come on, Jake. You can do it, Jake. You can do it, Jake. You're a brave dog. Jake. 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 Jake.
finally their most infamous videos, the cake series, where they made Max eat all the ingredients to a cake, throw it up, cook it, and then eat it. And then, in a second video, make a cake out of human hair. Yeah, it's no surprise that YouTube deleted both those videos. Frank was becoming the internet's biggest piece of filth, but TV Filthy Frank wasn't the only project that George was working on. Behind the scenes of his normal content, which usually involved Frank attacking different groups of people, George was beginning to build up a sort of lore behind his channel. He had created a world he liked to call the Omniverse, where everything is measured in chromosomes, the universe is littered with powerful creatures, and he and Pink Eye are being chased by a dark lord named Chin Chin. Usually, his story segments would only take up a few seconds at the end of a video, but occasionally George would make huge cinematic storylines that became so complex that at one point, an imposter Frank took over the channel, with the only difference being that he wore the stupid looking hat and a pair of glasses. I know your secret. You're not the real Frank. You're tripping, dog. You're tripping. <laughs> That's why you don't want the Peace Lords to find out! There will be a war. Aside from the tales of Frank and Pink Eye, George also had begun to start a small career in the music industry, writing comedy songs under the Pink Eye name. He made two different projects, with songs like Meme Machine, STFU, and Nickelodeon Girls. George had built up this massive world around the characters he had designed, and this is when the problem began. Because once you have this filthy world that you've created, with characters full of backstory and a world full of beings, what do you do when you want out? After amassing almost 8 million subscribers, TV Filthy Frank released what fans would soon find out was his final video. In a last ditch effort to abandon the channel, George decided to upload a video where Frank dies, and as his last act, he hands Pink Eye a book that he claimed had all the answers. This book, of course, was then put up for sale so fans could see how the story would end. But with Frank dead, George was now free from the confines of his millions of fans waiting for his next upload. So where did George go from there? Well, how does becoming a viral superstar sound? Behind the scenes of his YouTube channel, George had begun to secretly upload songs to SoundCloud under the name Joji. His very first project, Chloe Burbank Volume 1, grew a lot of traction online, and not for the reasons you might think. It wasn't grimy, it wasn't offensive, it wasn't frank. This was now Joji, and the music was beautiful, or as I like to call it, beautifully depressing. <laughs> It was very strange hearing a Joji song for the first time. Knowing that the guy who ate the vomit cake was the same guy I heard singing love songs on the internet was a weird thing to learn, but I mean, hey, it's impressive. I mean, totally insane, but still impressive. Over the next few years, George continued to put out albums as Joji, each one slightly more poppy from the last. In my opinion, I still think his first two projects, Chloe Burbank and Nin Tongs, were his best works, but I still do enjoy his newer stuff. So what's the point? What's the point of telling this long ass story because God knows that it's very well documented subject on the internet? Because in my opinion, this is the very last time something like this will happen. Let me explain. When I say that this is the last time this will happen, I didn't mean the last time that any internet star will start making music. Everyone from Logan Paul to KSI has made some sort of mixtape. When I say this is the last time that this will happen, I mean two different things. The first is that George found a way to ditch his brand and use his pure skill to gain his success. Instead of releasing a project under the name Filthy Frank or Pink Guy, he made a new name and released songs without advertising. This allowed for him to grow his own audience, which was a very smart move for him. That way people started to recognize him under a new name and not associate George with Frank. This inevitably made it much easier for him to start a new career and ditch his channel. The second thing I don't believe will ever happen again is a little more complicated. Over the last few years, there has been a new movement growing mainly on Twitter, and that is cancel culture. People who essentially make it their goal to seek out celebrities' pasts, point out mistakes they've made, and then use that essentially to end their careers forever. And sometimes this can be a positive thing, but this can also be used to cancel people who are much less deserving. So here's what I'm going to say. With the amount of offensive things George has said as Frank, it's a miracle this guy isn't working at a fast food restaurant right now. And I'm not saying that he deserves to be cancelled, because he doesn't. Like I said before, it's all a parody shrouded in irony. I'm just saying that he's very lucky to be in the position he is in right now. Another reason that people haven't pointed to Frank as a negative thing is because A, it's fucking hilarious, and B, George made it very obvious that Frank was a character. He frequently breaks during his bits, not to mention that the amount of hypocrisy behind the man is just more than any human could possibly endure. It's so, so obvious that this is a joke, and for the people who don't understand it, you're probably part of the problem. Frank was notorious for making fun of everyone. It didn't matter if you were black, white, Asian, stupid, smart, male, female, vegan, weeaboo, furry, gay, straight, if you existed on this planet, Frank had a target on you. And that's what made George uncontrollable. It's not like he was racist or sexist or homophobic. 
He was just a dick. He was just a dick to everyone he came across. Because he's filthy Frank. He's supposed to be a dick. He is the internet personified. But nowadays, I don't think that a character like Frank would be able to live on YouTube at all. YouTube's new policies would have never let a channel like this exist, and the only reason I think that TV Filthy Frank is still up now is because if they took it down, his fans would probably protest outside of YouTube HQ. But let's say that George Miller was born a few years later than he was. Do I think that right now someone could start a channel like TV Filthy Frank and be even half as successful as George became? No, not even close. People would most likely look over the character and the satire and the irony and instead just focus on out of context clips and that would be it. And that's what makes George the last of his kind, because George Miller is a one of a kind person who appeared at the right time in internet history and whose mic will be left on the world forever. It's filthy Frank, motherfucker! It's filthy Frank, bitch! Let's get some pussy tonight! Okay, I'm gonna make this quick because I'm sitting in a sweaty ass closet with no air conditioning, so buckle in. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you everyone uh, who has subscribed. I really do appreciate it. I mean, the amount of support I've been gaining on this channel is actually insane. Uh, so thank you guys. Anyone who's even watched my videos, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Uh, second of all, I'm starting a Discord server. Uh, I want to reach out to you guys more. I want to be more active with my community. Uh, so the link will be in the description. Uh, join up, you know, we can talk, have some fun. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.